Hey guys, Dave Anderson here, Heli Cools Heli Pad. Hey, you asked for it, you got it. <laughs> so I'm on my way to Bill Sands place. We're gonna do a collaboration build. That ought to be nice and fun. I'm gonna try to swing by Sean Filner's place and surprise him for just a few minutes. So you guys stay tuned. This is gonna be a good one. Well, here I am at Sean Filner's place. <laughs> That's the second time I've tagged. But this time, we're gonna go on in and and uh, see what Sean's up to. Uh, so the rusty build is coming along. Sean, what do you got going next? Um, well, now that I got this whole head gasket issue fixed, I'm waiting yet, yet again on some parts. I got uh, some exhaust studs that I want to replace. Um, that's one of the projects. And then tomorrow, since I got oil vapors in my air system still, we're going to swap out my spare compressor with the one that's on there and then rebuild the compressor that's on the truck at some point. But for now, got a brand new uh, dryer cartridge ready to go. But this one's got a lot of good compression. You can hear it. So, so oh. another able build. Yeah, I, I'm going to add another episode to that, but that's an ongoing lifetime commitment there. So, <laughs> oh, potentially, yeah. I'll probably be doing all kinds of stuff. There's always something going on over here. You know, you got a fleet of vehicles like this, you got to service them. So, well, here is the before of Bill's rig. Um, <laughs> I love it how it's a clean slate. Uh, he's got the back painted. And check out this this box. Everything, you know, fits so close. It's beautiful. I will leave a link um, in the description for that box. So that if you like how this is set up, you can you can purchase that yourself. But uh, man, I'm telling you what, this is set up so that box, that habitat can snug right up against that cab, really close. I think it's only 14 inches. So. It's looking really nice for a blank slate. Well, good morning, guys. <laughs> it is it is about 6.15 in the morning. I'm at Clackamas Metalworks in Clackamas, Oregon. And uh, we're gonna be building this really outstanding, engineered, zero torsion frame, Bill Sands. It's his truck, it's going on. We should have it done in about two hours, but because I'm shooting a YouTube video on it, it'll probably take four. <laughs> those of you that know if you've ever shot a YouTube video and, and do a bunch of editing and whatnot it always takes twice to three times longer than what it actually should stay tuned and there's Bill we're ready to roll so this is the subframe and this is how it comes shipped with all of these weldments in place. It is completely powder coated. One of the many great things about this system is that it is totally customizable. These are two inch in diameter chromoly steel pegs. They have a shear strength of around 120,000 pounds. What we have here, Dave, is a zinc plated for your protection for corrosion, as well as when we design these parts, we also have the shaft come through the plate, so there's actually no load bearing or shear factor on the actual weld itself. The weld is just there merely to hold the shaft clear, parallel and square. I was just amazed at just the wonderful quality of the parts. They were just awesome. All of these parts, of course, would come pre-assembled to the customer. This is rated at 60,000 pounds each. The engineering instructions not only give a pictorial of how the parts go together, but a parts list in case you ever need to order a spare part. <laughs> So I recommend at least three to four people, strong folks, to be able to lift that up onto the frame of the truck. And again, it is just sitting on four by fours for now. With this design, we're gonna be 14 inches away from the cab. That's where the habitat is going to be. 
All right, what we got here is a three-point front mount, and you have a full 12 inches of travel that you can adjust where you would like your pivot point to be located so it will actually clear any kind of subframe connectors, any kind of brackets you might have. If you opt to do the four-point, you actually can move the bracket here to the center, and you have almost a full 24 inches of adjustment where you can locate it based upon the center of the other pivots. Now, let's position this underneath the back of the frame. this up. Okay, we're down. Yep. Okay. All right. Line it up. Okay. All right. All right. Now we see if we have the nuts and bolts. Can I get us out? Good to go. Temporarily mount the side pivot brackets on the frame. It's really okay to fuss and fuss over the measurement of where the frame is actually going to be because, you know, you only have one chance at it. My advice, of course, is to bring two tape measures so you don't have to keep throwing the tape measure back and forth <laughs> over the top of the truck to get everything right. But once again, make sure that you get it right. And it's okay to go back and remeasure and remeasure as many times as you think that you need to to get it right. Use shoring material to elevate the subframe to center the bracket onto the upper frame. It's time to mark and drill the holes for the brackets. The optimal way to mark your holes is with a transfer punch, but a pencil will do in a pinch. Sun project. Easier to bolt it on. Now we have to move the subframe out of the way so that we can better drill the holes and attach the brackets. For the ease of drilling these holes, we actually removed one of the batteries to get down a little bit closer to where we need to be. Just use caution when doing that. Well, this is going to be the most uh, time consuming part of the build is to drill all of the holes after you're done drilling all the holes, install the bolts as shown. So this is a universal cross member. You see it's a little bit wider than what I actually need, so I actually drill the holes. The goal is this will actually accommodate 48 inch wide subframes frames, and narrower. So you have an opportunity to use it for pretty much any vehicle. Okay, so with every expedition, there is a uh, expectation of ruggedness and severe duty with ever losing or breaking, having any troubles in the field. So I'm going to use the long length of this to actually build a secondary gusset using these holes that connects it to the frame. That will prevent the loading on the bolts and actually allow the loading to be on the side of the frame. This will help transfer that forces and loads that we can't predict it sometimes. So one design feature of Globe Trekker is modularity and flexibility. So we are giving everybody an option to tailor to fit their needs. I told you my option. Your option is you can even cut this flush and weld it on if you wanted to. Cut it flush, bolt it on. You've got the options and flexibility to do anything you wish. Again, I'm going for just a secondary gusset. Everything I like to do has got a second option and a second backup fail safe. In addition to preventing this from going side to side and not put all the side loading onto the shaft collar alone, we also have a secondary pivot containment that goes inside of the frame. 
So on the three point, not the four point, only on the three point, this will bolt up inside the frame. You'll, sh you'll size this to your frame side and this will go on the side. And the beauty of this is, this gives you full rotational positional of up to the 12 degrees that we're talking about, in addition to letting the whole frame flex, but prevent it from going from side to side. Sharp drill bits are highly recommended. Now that the heim joints are in, it's time to walk the frame onto the brackets. Okay, so not even seven and a half inches from frame to the top of the new subframe. The weldments here also include a shaft lock collar, which actually has a set screw that positions the shaft to keep it from sliding forward and backward. In addition to, there's going to be another shaft lock. Well, it looks like we are done for the day. Wow, that it just kind of went really smooth, didn't it? Dirty hands. Dirty hands. <laughs> Not anymore. All right, well, it's time to head out. Let's, let's take off. I thought it went pretty well. So three and a half people, that's what it took. Three and a half people, because we needed one extra person for just short stint. Otherwise, the three of us did it all. Yep, that's right. So we're heading on home. What is that? This. It's the same day. We just had lunch. <laughs> and I thought that I was going to get a dinner out of this too. We just had lunch. Is it too early for a beer? Never. <laughs> it's never too early for a beer. That's all from us. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. We'd like to thank Preston of Clackamas Metalworks for letting us borrow his shop. Thanks so much, Preston. We've got one more thing to do, and that's to test that zero torsion subframe. Okay, so there's the twist of the, of the truck frame. But is this twisted at all? No, it is not. Absolutely no twist at all. Hey, we sure had a great time together. I so much enjoyed doing a build with another FMTV owner. Just great, great guy. And it was, a, it was an awesome build. It turned out perfect. Until next time, I'm Dave Anderson signing out. You guys be safe out there and God bless.